both of you boys moved from being, uh, you know, ent- solo entertainers or in bands. You both went into theatre production. Johnny, you, you did uh, something happened on the way to the uh, the forum. The, the forum. forum. The forum. Yeah. yeah. What was what was that like? All star cast. You had Charles Hawtrey. You had um, Kenneth Connor was the director. Dave King had the main character. He just taken over from Frankie Howard. Um, but I was watching these performers, and they, they all knew their job. You know, I mean. When I watched Charles Hawtrey, I'd, I'd only ever seen him on films. And after two days, he's walking about, no script. He knew all his moves. He, they were good actors, yeah. you know what I mean? So you learn from people like that when you go into those yes, shows, definitely. I think. I mean, you played the big I bop, did, yeah. you, Mike? Johnny, I... <clears throat> that was a wonderful experience, you know. Uh, he was at the Victoria Palace Theatre in London. And um, my good friend Alex Bourne played... Uh, Buddy Holly and um, Alex Paez from New York they Richie Valen and I, I had the time of my life I gotta apologise guys they, they, we got builders next door <laughs> next door but one yeah. they've got I the drill out <laughs> dogs we got builders we got we got everything um, Mike yeah go in, you were the big bopper in, uh, yeah. in in the West End. Were you nervous going into the West End? A, a different sort of, you know, different uh, set of skills required? Um, <clears throat> I think... Uh, <clears throat> I, I remember going for the audition and uh, Laurie Mansfield was my manager then and he was part of that show and he said, I can't just give you the part. You have to audition like everybody else. But he said, I can tell you now, you'll never have an audition like this in the West End anywhere. Yeah. In the audience was Bruce Welsh from The Shadows. And, of course, I, I knew him because I did the tours years ago with him. And um, Paul Elliott, um, Laurie was there, and, and a few others, you know. And they before I came on, they just said, R- right then, mate, we want you to do whatever you want. Take as long as you want. This isn't a two-minute thing or a one-minute thing. Uh, oh, we are going to ask you to read some script, but we're not going to check out your, your acting skills and whatever. We'll know because Buddy has to be... The Buddy Holly show had to look real. That's what the difference between... Because I was in Greece, the musical as well. And the difference between yeah. Greece and Buddy, Greece was like a bubblegum, you know... It, 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 someone's idea of what it might have been like in the 50s but Buddy the Buddy Holly story was in oh well we, you know the purists came to see this show and they said well that's as near that's as near as um, as damn it that, that is like so bang on you know <laughs> The first two weeks, a friend of mine, he's a, he's a pastor of a church, Ray Bevan, he came up with about 40, 50 people on a coach. <laughs> right? Now, he's a bit mental, a bit mad, like, oh, Ray, you know, I love Ray. And um, there's lots of, there's lots of uh, bits in the Buddy Holly show where they'll say, you know, um, Buddy, you will pay 10% of all you earn and you give that to your church where God has been good to you. You will repay with the 10% to the church. Well, this particular night when I had half a king's church in with me, right? <laughs> They're all on their feet. Praise uh. the God, praise the Lord. <laughs> and he's, he's jumping up and down and the ushers, the ushers are going up to them and going, shush, shush. <laughs> so it, 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 I, had, I had the best time in that show because um, it felt real. But you know what I like, uh, the music yeah, yeah. but the music 
was all Buddy Holly, of course, and uh, Big Bopper had a tune, and Richie Valens had a tune. But the incidental yeah, yeah. music was beautiful that run throughout, you know, Mr. Sandman. And we always sit in the dressing room going, bring me some sand. But <laughs> <laughs> an honour, privilege and all that uh, to, to have been asked to be part of it. I also went to Canada to play the Big Bopper in Toronto. And um, we were playing at the Princess of Wales Theatre well, right. on King, they call it, in, in Toronto. And um, I met the man who owned the theatre, the Lucky Ed, Ed Furmish, Ed Furmish. Um, seriously old guy, when I, when I met him, he's dead now, but he was like in his 90s, right? And he'd say, he'd look at the dancing girls and he'd look at the dancing yeah. girls and he'd go, oh my God. What I give to be eighty again. <laughs> <laughs> he was a great character, and, and yeah, he, yeah. he asked yeah. me if I would like to sing the Canadian and American national anthems for a Toronto Raptors game over at the Sky Dome. So wow. I stood, I stood in the middle of this humongous stadium and sang the two anthems, and. Uh, and, hmm. and a funny story after that, I then go and have a drink like you do in this, this, this bar called the Acme Bar. I'll never forget it. Snow was coming down. Seriously cold, man. Like minus 20. Seriously cold. And um, I hear in the background, well, I was thinking maybe we should... Da, 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 da. I thought, oh, it was Bryn <laughs> So I went, Bryn, Bryn. <laughs> I, I, I sang with you on St. David's Hall stage on a St. David's Day concert. Oh, yes, I remember it well. I said, I never want to sing with you again. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, he, he and I went and had a beer together. He's a lovely bloke, his Greg, and he's really nice to do with. Top bloke. Yeah. 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 So there we are. Lovely, lovely catching up. I mean, I think we've only just much. just scratched the surface. Um, just looking looking ahead. I mean, we you know, there's so many things we could have talked about, like playing the part of Tommy Fire and Contender, and and all your other club stories. Yeah. You should be right. Are you writing a book at the moment? Yeah, very slowly. Um, just they like little little short stories, I guess. And um, I'll be looking forward to covering um. Contender, which you brilliantly wrote alongside many other things, and uh, but that was a great time in my life, Mal. I, it was a great time for for a lot of us, wasn't it? Yeah. It was uh, an absolute joy to be part of Contender, and I, I would be f uh, forever grateful. I mean that because I, I learned a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Tommy Paul. Look who's just born into town. Took the bomb of fifty rounds. Now his feet don't touch the ground. This guy's in the groove. Who's the star? It's Tommy Farr. Darling, catch out, still blowing his arms. It's Tommy Farr. Oh, 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 oh. I ain't coming on that town when I'm in this rolling gun. I know I'm not off the job, but I stay the boy with Tommy. It's me all night. It's Tommy Farr. And, and Michael Bogdanoff, I, God, God rest him. I learned so much from that man. I really did, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? I think as and we it, all did, as we all did. I think. Uh, he, he used to make me laugh, you know. He, he. I remember one day we were doing a scene, and Michael Bogdanoff went. <laughs> oh, we used to laugh. He goes. <laughs> he said, and then he'd stop and go, "Why are you shouting?" <laughs> I said, um, no, he said, it's, it's, it's a serious question. It's a serious question. I'm asking why you're shouting. I went, um, well, if I was Tommy Farr and somebody was coming in threatening my wife and children and taking the furniture away, bailiffs, I would have something to say about it. He said, I'm sure Mike Doyle would. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're Tommy Farr. These people are so scared of you. <laughs> He said, do it again, but this time I want to hardly, I have to really listen to what you're saying. Hello. <clears throat> um, is that uh, Joby Churchill? Who wants to know? Well, it's an old friend of yours. Goes by the name of Don Quixote. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is there a new bridle that you're after? No, no, God, no. No, no, this time, Jovi, no, mate, no, no. Listen, um, the reason why I'm ringing, you know, I'm, well, I find myself with too much time on my hands. You know, I'll be looking at some of these so-called title contenders, man. William Saval Basky Gardner, another one. Listen, I've, I've been thinking, Joby, there's some money to be made. You know, if I, if I was to go back into the ring. Making a comeback, is it? Yeah, it's about the size of it, yeah. Tommy, yeah. Tommy Tom Bach. <laughs> Ten years ago, they wouldn't have put a glove on the old Tommy Farr. But, hey, you can pick up an awful lot of ring rust in ten years. Toby, I broke! Right? But they want to take the bloody house. So I haven't crawled out of the gutter for them to take me, the wife, and the two boys. Yes, the two boys, Joby, man! Swansea Grand on opening night. I did exactly as he directed me, and when I whispered, get out, get out, the crowd went, <gasps> as if to say, <sighs> he said, and he said, Mike, he said, if they don't believe you're Tommy Farr, with that one small little soft breath, and that, I love, oh boy, did I learn off him, you know. And I loved it because he, he loved me. I know he did. And I and I, I made sure I was never late, you know, and I'm never late. And you know me, man. man. <laughs> but I, I, I arrived yesterday to get there today, you know. But but I was never late, you know. And, um, he, and he, he, rec he recognised that. And, um, and uh, just a brilliant, brilliant bloke. And, um, yeah. And, and Mike, what, what does the future hold for you now? Obviously, in COVID, we've all been in lockdown. Um, are you making plans yet? Yes, um, it's been um, it's been a tough tough year for us all, um, and uh, a lot of my rocking with laughter shows were cancelled. Panto was cancelled. All the cruises were cancelled. <laughs> but um, you know, I don't feel as if that's that then, because we are starting to to rebook some of the uh, the rocking with laughter shows throughout wales uh, the pantomime posters all have 2021 2022 on them that's a good time <laughs> and uh, the, i've had positive um, emails from my agent the, my cruise ship agent uh, saying that um you know they they they're hoping to go this summer but um you know we we i'm hanging on in there mal and with what happened to my son tom um, he's 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 kept us all going with his wonderful recovery. Um, he's done so well because um, if nobody knows, he did get the COVID and was on a ventilator and in hospital for quite a while. And it's taken him ten months to recover, but he is like almost back now. And uh, so thanks uh, for anybody that um, that thought of him and I said a little prayer for him. I do appreciate that, and so does he greatly. And um, uh, and, and to all the media as well, I thought. You know, fair play to BBC Wales and to ITV Wales as well. You know, they, they, everybody was interested in our Tom, and um, a, a lot of care was uh, was thrown our way, and we'll be eternally grateful. So, lots to look forward to, Mal, and uh, keeping positive, keeping it up, and uh, yeah, looking forward to getting back at it. Fantastic. Uh, we're both from. from uh, it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from him, and it's goodbye from Mike Doyle as well. Lovely to have you with us on the program, Mike. Speak to you soon. Uh Thank you both very much, Anita. The programme's great, Matt. All the best to you.